Aro, you know, how many centimeters that are. Okay, but they measure that at the lip line. So is it solid where your right hand is? So this is solid here, yeah? but yeah, it's not, yeah. So when a poacher comes, do they just cut that off with a saw or do they get it all the way to the end? Okay, so obviously if a poacher walks in here, he'll only pull it. Right, okay. with, with line. Or... But if he's just shot it, they will start hacking it here. Mm -hmm. Because remember, it goes up to there. So they hack this entire half the skull, they hack to pieces. So are y'all going to take that with y'all? Yeah, they will. They will. Yeah. So typically if you come across a carcass that's missing tusk and you think, okay, definitely somebody has taken the ivory. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you can see that it has been pulled, it's probably been an opportunistic person that just come across a natural death and just it has already rotted enough to just pull the tusk. And then it's like, yeah, they, they've taken the ivory, but they haven't killed the elephant. Whereas if you come across a, a, a carcass where you can see the front of the face has been chopped off, that's when they shot it for the, for the ivory. And if this was a big bull and we can actually separate the, the skull from the body, I would be able to pick up the head, the skull only, you know, not the head, obviously, the, the, the skull. Because here, it's got a massive honeycomb appearance inside the skull. It's not solid like the tusk. This is not solid bone. All right, this is actually a honeycomb appearance and there's fat in there, which we call acoustic fat, which never changes. So there's fat here and there's fat in the foot. We can quickly talk about it tomorrow. And they call that acoustic fat. It never changes if the elephant also becomes thin or not. And they use that specifically for a communication with a low infrasound, the way they communicate, you know, with other elephants, which they can communicate up to five to 10 kilometers with other elephants, which you and I probably cannot hear most of the time. Okay. And then a tradition from Kenya, from the Maasai and from Buru, when you come across a carcass of an elephant, you place a little bit of grass in the, in the skull for him to rest in peace. It's a sign of respect. He's resting peacefully. If we come here after another month or six weeks, the pieces of skin that you'll probably find here is one or three. You'll find the soles here. There's all three of them. Okay. So this is so tough that it stays here for months and months and months or the ears or the trunk and the other very peculiar thing about elephants is they almost have a sense of death about them so if other elephants will come here you know this elephant has obviously died here so if there are a lot of elephants in this area they will make a path towards this carcass they will actively come here and they will come visit this carcass. Okay, there's a well researched known fact. All right, and what they very funnily a lot of times focus on is the ivory and the head, the skull. They won't, you know, they might carry some of those bones around, but they like focusing on the ivory and the skull. And they'll spend some time here and then they'll leave again and if this all these bones have been carried off by hyenas or whatever eventually and there's nothing left here this path that were made by elephants coming here will just disappear so meaning elephants will actively come and visit this carcass spend time here it's i'm not sure i know about any other animal will do and it's not like if it was a dead buffalo or a dead hippo or whatever, they're just ignoring it. It's yep. dead elephants they are coming up. I've seen it myself several times. They come up, they pick up bone, they pick up uh, the ivory. They even take in, put it in their mouth and, and drop it. And they keep revisiting the site uh, over and over again. 
almost like they have a sense of mourning yeah. when they come here. Yeah. 